second, our second speaker uh, in the second session uh, today is Ender Alp Yakaboylu from uh, uh, Max Planck Institute in uh, Garching near Munich. Uh, his title, his talk is titled Molecular Impurities uh, as a Realization of Anions uh, on the Two Sphere. So Ender Alp, you have 25 minutes. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Okay, thank you very much for this kind introduction. So I will talk about anions, particular anions on the two sphere, and I will try to realize these anions in terms of molecular impurities. So let me start my motivation. I mean, as you know, all over the world, the main research uh, is going in the direction of quantum computers. All over the world, there are lots of groups working on it. In fact, from the conceptual point of view, all these tools uh, somehow well established. But the, from the physical point of view, from the experimental point of view, there are some problems. The, 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 the main challenge, the main problem is in fact noise, decorrence, which means that in fact, we shouldn't lose quantums of these particles that we want to manipulate all this computation. Therefore, in fact, main challenge in quantum computers is to be able to construct fault error computation or error correcting computation. And one of the promising ways to overcome this problem, in fact, to use topology. I mean, topology by its name is robust against somehow local deformation and somehow we can avoid such kind of noises. And in fact, Kitev came up with a very nice idea and he showed that certain quasi particle excitations called anions can be, can be used to construct such quantum computation. So far, so good. And the problem is, then the question is, where are these anions? In fact, a few months ago, I read an interview from Kitev and Preskill, and they admit that the experimental progress on anions is much slower than they expected. So let me start, let me show my outline. So in the first part, I will talk about anions, what those particles are, what is the relation between gauge fields, and how can we realize these emergent anions. Then I will pass to my main part, which is about molecular impurities. Then, Later, I will slightly switch the focus of my talk. I will talk about symmetries, but at the end, I will show that this is also related to anions, and I will conclude my talk at the end. So let's start with anions. As you know, uh, according to Spinster's theorem, if, if you exchange, if you swap two particles, then you will obtain a phase factor, which is given by minus one to two s. S is the spin of your particle. It could be either integer or half integer. In fact, you can write down this uh, swapping exchange properties in two-body wave function in relative coordinates. So, for example, if you define this two-body wave function in relative coordinates, and if you rotate pi, then you will obtain a phase factor, which is given by e to the i alpha pi. Here, alpha is called statistical parameter. If alpha equals zero, you have bosons, basically. If alpha equals one, you have fermions. <laughs> so, basically, it characterizes your symmetries, whether your wave function is symmetric or anti-symmetric. But this statement is true only in three plus one dimensional space time. Why? You know, we classify all these particles in terms of Poincare group, and the Poincare group can be mapped to SO3 for massive particles, and you can show that SO3, just using the Lie algebra, admits some of spin, spin quantization. So spin could be either integer or half integer. But if you lower your dimension, for example, if you go to two plus one dimensional space time, then the, you can still start from the spin sets theorem, but this time the, the little group or the Wigner group goes to SO2. And SO2 is just a billion group. It's just you can rotate either in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction. And there is no non-trivial Lie algebra, and spin is not quantized in this sense. Therefore, spin can assume any number. Therefore, the statistic parameter alpha can assume any number between uh, zero and one. That's why these parts particles now obey any statistics. That's why they are called anions. But there's a strange thing happening here. If you rotate one more time, so this means that if you exchange twice, then you will not end up with the same configuration. So basically, you have unusual boundary conditions. So in relative uh, coordinates, your wave function will not be single valued. You will obtain a phase factor given by e to the i pi, 2 pi alpha. If, of course, alpha equals zero or one, you end up with the same thing. But if alpha assumes any number, then it will be different. This is, in fact, 
where topology enters the game. So exchanging onions twice is not topologically equivalent to leaving them alone. So this is so-called braiding. And this is where, in fact, how you can store the information. OK. But of course, we live, I mean, we know, we live at least in a three plus one dimensional world. So this means that there cannot exist onions at elementary level. But nevertheless, we can mimic these particles. How? As I told you, the two-body wave function is not single body. But of course, you can apply some gauge transformation and you can still write down a single body wave function. For example, assume that your psi prime, which is multi-volute, is governed by some Hamilton H prime and the relevant quantity is tau del phi. And if you apply some gauge transformation, you will obtain a single volt wave function, which means that your Hamiltonian transform Hamiltonian will on symmetric or anti-symmetric wave functions. But there's a price to pay. The price is the following. After this transformation, the relevant quantity del over del phi, which is angular momentum, goes to del over del phi plus I alpha. So now the statistic parameter emerges as a gauge field. So in this picture now, anions can be described as bosons or fermions interacting with the statistical gauge field. This is in fact where the complication starts. In fact, this picture also allows us to realize anions in our world. How? In fact, this is how we check the, the anions. Consider, for example, a composite called flux to charge particle composite, which means that you have an electron orbiting around a flux tube. Now consider two composites and let us exchange these composites. So after swapping, one of the uh, charged particles of the one of the composites will capture the Arnon bomb phase of the flux of the other composite. So this is in fact the manifestation of anion. So under exchange, you can capture a phase factor. Of course, this is just intuitive. If you go to more than two particles, things are a little complicated, but there's in fact more rigorous way to define this statistical gauge field which is in fact chern simons picture. You know, <clears throat> in two plus one case, apart from Maxwell theory or young Mills theory, there's another, there's another gauge invariant coupling, which is chern simons form. If you couple, for example, matter field to chern simons and if you find the equation of motion, then you will find the statistical gauge field. And now the corresponding Hamiltonian for any part, because now is given by this, this. So A is here the statistical gauge field and given by some holonomy of the gauge field. Okay, so this is the basic formalism. And we know that in fact, the excitations in the fraction quantum hole effect are basically anions. They obey fraction statistics. But there are some still problems. So experimental evidence, at least experimental manipulation of these quasi particles is still challenging. And to be honest, this experimental evidence is not yet conclusive and still debate, although there are some recent uh, progress. So, my point is the following. How can we realize these onions in a more simple problem, in a more standard condensed matter system like crystal lattice or ultra cold gases? We can use this emerging gauge field picture. For example, let us consider n impurities given by the first term. And let us couple these impurities a bat, uh, some mini particle environment. And for simplicity, let us assume that the phonon field has only one degree of freedom, just we consider just single phonon mode, which is given by a degree a. And this is the interaction. So lambda is coupling, omega is your dispersion, and f is your holonomy, somehow which should produce the statistical gauge field. So if we apply some transformation, somehow to diagonalize your minibody part, you will end up with this equation. And if you also diagonalize this Hamiltonian in the base of Fox space, you will do the following. You will basically take the matrix element from vacuum to vacuum, vacuum to one phonon state, and so on. Now, here's the thing. If the gap between the vacuum sector and one phonon sector is very large, which is controlled by dispersion relation omega, then the vacuum sector will decouple from the rest of the spectrum. And in this case, uh, the lowest spectrum of your impurity Hamiltonian corresponds to anions. So now using these pictures, let us define uh, onions on the two sphere. First of all, why uh, I am interested in onions on the two sphere? I mean, so far, all this experimental realization on onions is, is focusing on onions on the plane. But we know that the topology and geometry uh, plays a significant role for quantum statistics. 
And also, we can also understand in a better way some certain phenomena like fraction quantum model effect and so on. So, let us try to realize these unions on two sphere. So, there are some subtleties. First of all, in contrast to plain case, in order to find the uh, mind potential A, this is called H with A, uh, you have to introduce two charts for the sphere. So, in the plain case, you can find always single mind potential, but for S2, due to non trivial homology of S2, uh, you have to introduce two charts. Basically, you have to remove one point from the sphere and you have to map the plane, and you have to do the same thing uh, other way around, such that you have to uh, remove another opposite point, for example, from antidote, then you have to again map the plane, and so on. But the point is that in the overlap patch, the solutions should be equivalent to each other. And this equivalence is secured by so-called direct quantization condition. And this is where, in fact, the statistic parameter uh, depends on the geometry. As you see, for example, in, on the sphere case, the statistic parameter can assume only some certain modules. For example, in the plane case, this statistic parameter alpha can assume from zero to one, but in the, uh, in the sphere, it only depends on the, the number of particles also. For example, if you have just two particles, then the statistic parameter is just integer again. In order to obtain fraction values, you have to go to uh, higher number of particles. Okay, for example, uh, let us consider the simple space. So for example, just two uh, particles on the sphere and let us couple these two particles to a bat. Again, the first term is just the uh, Laplacian on the sphere. The can energy of those two particles. Again, I'm assuming that there is only one uh, phonon mode and this phonon mode couples to these impurities. And these Fs are again the holonomy of field. So, as I told you, on the sphere, if you have just two particles, then statistic parameter assumes only integer values. But I would like to see the whole interpolation from bosons to fermions or from fermions to bosons. In order to achieve these ones, we also consider additional Dirac monopole field. Under this condition now, the Dirac quantization condition will be different. In this case, for example, the condition is given by 2b minus n minus 1 times alpha should be integer. And since b could be any number, then the alpha can assume any number. So let us see the result. So this is the spectrum uh, as a function of the relative uh, statistic parameter. It's not absolute one, it's relative. We plot this in order to be consistent with the existing literature. And here, alpha equals 0 corresponds to fermionic end, and alpha equals to 1 corresponds to bosonic end. And as you see, the spectrum clearly interpolates between fermionic end to bosonic end. And this is, we obtain this solution just solving the uh, impurity model in the limit of omega goes to infinity. Okay, so in fact, this approach provides us some numerical tools, but also we can also realize these particles. So first of all, what we need is a Laplacian on the sphere. But if you consider the mathematical structure of Laplacian on the sphere, it's nothing but angular momentum operator. An angular momentum operator, in fact, is the kinetic energy of a, of a linear molecules or re linear rotors. So this means that I can realize these impurities with linear molecules. But this is very interesting. For example, consider two molecules. And now I'm not exchanging these molecules. I'm not swapping these, part, uh, these molecules. I'm just playing their rotations. Just playing their rotations, for example, I can exchange the corresponding point particles on the sphere. So this is very important. So this means that if you immerse molecules in a, or if you couple these molecules to a bat, then there should exist a, some kind of exclusion principle for these molecular impurities due to the statistical interaction. But there is another important thing. Since here, the statistic parameter manifests itself in the alignment of molecules. And we know that the alignment of molecules is easy to access experimentally. Since, you know, in the, the big challenge about observing anions, how to detect this statistical parameter. And this is really a promising way. Okay, this is how we realize impurities. But what about the coupling? How can we realize the bat and so on? In fact, this is also possible. This is also feasible. In fact, recently it was shown that molecular impurities rotating inside the helium nanodroplets can be described within uh, quantum impurity problems. In fact, the resulting quasi particle is called angulon and it describes the angular momentum exchange between the, the molecules and the bat. 
And now we write, uh, we can write down the corresponding Hamiltonian of the angle on given by equation six. For those uh, who are familiar with the Frehley polaron, this is very similar to Frehley polaron problem. So the first term is just the kinetic energy of the uh, impurities. The second term is just dispersion relation of phonons. And the last term is just interaction. So here, omega KLM sum of dispersion. Here, I expanded creation and relation operators in spherical bases such that it is now transparent to see this exchange of angular momentum. And YLM is just spherical harmonics and UKL just some coupling. Okay. So remember, in order to achieve the ionic spectra, we need the gap dispersion relation. How can we satisfy this one? So if you have a look at the dispersion relation of helium nanodroplets, you will see it is similar to this red line. And there exists a certain uh, gap, which is called rotom minimum. And if you manage to somehow concentrate your interaction around rotom minimum, then you can obtain this gap. Furthermore, in order to obtain the, a huge gap, now we can consider, for example, heavy molecules. So if you scale your Hamiltonian with the mass of your molecules, then effective dispersion relation will be just rotom minimum times the mass. And when the mass goes to infinity, then you will obtain a huge gap and the low spectrum will decouple from the rest of the spectrum. In fact, this is basically this adiabacity. Furthermore, we can also couple, uh, we can also find the model coupling, which describe this uh, molecular interaction in helium nanodroplet. In fact, this coupling given by equation seven is, is quite good to, to uh, explain the experimental observations. So now let us calculate statistical gauge field. If you calculate statistical gauge field, you will obtain a prefactor, what I call alpha theta. Here, uh, this quantity a priori depends on the relative angle between the molecules. But if you have a look at the, the graph and if you tune your parameters such that, you will see that this parameter is almost constant in the long range of theta. So this means that this parameter now behaves like exactly statistical parameter. So this is in fact how you realize anion. So basically, if you immerse two molecules in a helium nanodroplet, and if you localize at rotom minimum, and if you go to a high mass limit, then basically low spectrum should obey anionic spectra. Okay, now let me slightly uh, focus, change the, the focus of my talk. Let us talk about symmetries of quantum impurities, in particular about molecular impurities. So at the moment, forget about all these impurities and bad and phonons and so on. Just consider just linear molecule. Linear molecule, in fact, just a rigid rotor in this sense. Or let us consider just single rigid rotor. How would you define the spectra? In fact, you have to start with symmetries, right? The rigid rotor is, by its definition, is rigid. So uh, the symmetry is SO3, just the three-dimensional rotations. And just using this group properties, you can define your Hamiltonian, which is just the operator of your Hamiltonian. And using just algebra, now you can find the spectrum, which is given by J times J plus one, right? Now let us immerse this object in a bat. What's happening in this case? In fact, all this cloud of phonons dresses your molecule, right? And you will obtain a quasi-particle. If in this sense, quasi-particle is, is more or less a regular particle with a renormalized quantities, like in the polaron case, for example, polaron is just a free electron with a renormalized mass or renormalized charge. This is the same thing. So if you couple a molecule to bat, then your molecule will be dressed with this excitation of phonons. This means that rigidity is now broken due to the, this cloud of phonons. So this is how we obtain the renormalization rotation constant or how we obtain quasi-particle. Now the question is the following, can we find a symmetric group for this angle or this quasi-particle? So here's the idea. So rigid rotor corresponds to SO3. And now when we immerse in a bat, this rigid is somehow broken. It, it is getting deformed, so to say. So now idea is the following, let us deform then SO3. So this is so-called Q deformation. And this is the, the algebra and here it is, it looks very similar to regular algebra, but there's a square bracket notation. And this square bracket notation shows that the expression is given by this formula. So 
Here Q is your deformation parameter. When Q goes to one, then you will obtain the regular uh, algebra. And basically Q controls your deformation. So since I know the uh, Lie algebra or commutation relation, now I can define the corresponding Casimir operator. So this means that now I can write down, write down a uh, Hamiltonian for a deformed rotor. This is given by some, again, some rotational constant times some Casimir operator. Since I know also the algebra, I can find the whole spectrum. And the spectrum this time is given by j times j plus one, but in a Q uh, number. Again, if the Q is one, then I will obtain the regular spectrum. Since I know the exact result, now I can also calculate the corresponding normalization with respect to the rigid rotor at any order, since I know the exact result. So here is the idea. For the moment, let us assume that this deformation parameter is small. So let's say one plus epsilon, and I can expand up to any order in epsilon. And also from the impurity problem, let us assume that interaction between the molecules and the bat is not so strong, it is weak. Then I can use perturbation theory and I can calculate this normalization of a rotation constant up to second order. And let us, at this order, match these two expressions, one from quantum group approach, one from just perturbation theory. And let us extract the Q parameter, this deformation parameter, as a function of parameters of, the, of your bath, like dispersion relation, coupling, rotation constant, and so on. Now the question is the following. Is this exact uh, or full expression for normalized rotation constant is valid for beyond uh, perturbative regime. So let us check it. So this is the result. So the y-axis is the rotational constant, normalization of rotation, rotation constant, and the x-axis uh, is the density of your bat or density of um, or logarithm of rotation constant. The dash red line corresponds to quantum group technique, and the blue lines correspond to some non perturbative techniques like variational techniques or diachromatic Monte Carlo technique. And it looks like our quantum group technique is capturing the, 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 the non perturbative things. So this is really nice. So this is our conjecture now. If the symmetry of a free quantum particle corresponds to the Lie group G, that in the presence of many body environment, this part can be described by a deformed group GQ. And what is the relation of this approach with anions? In fact, let us have a look at just the standard canonical quantization. How would you do that? In fact, it is just computation of B and B dagger, right? And if it is bosons, you should obtain a minus factor. If it is fermions, since alpha this time is one, then you will obtain additional minus one and it should be plus. But if general, if alpha assumes n number between zero and one, then your computation relation given by some Q parameter. And this is exactly exact relation between the deformation parameter uh, and anions. In fact, if you look at from more, more fundamental level, the level, the so-called level parameter of chern simons action, in fact, is nothing but the, your Q parameter. So with this, I would like to conclude my talk. So basically, the impurity model has some advantages. First of all, really, just the lowest spectrum of the impurity model in the limit of large dispersion corresponds to ionic spectra under certain coordination if the interaction couples in a, in a holonomic way. And this opens up really new and simple numerical approaches to investigate the spectra of many ions. You know, uh, the, the main challenge for anions, as I told you, even free anion corresponds to interacting bosons. Therefore, to obtain the spectra of many anions is really challenging. So this is one uh, advantage. The second thing, in fact, we can realize these anions in a standard met in, in a standard condensed matter system, really like crystal lattices, ultracold gas, or helium nanodroplet. And this really offers uh, uh, important practical advantages over strong correlated materials like uh, quantum molecules and so on. And of course, as a last thing with this quantum group technique, quantum or Q deformation technique, we can also find another hint that the impurities can be, can be used as a realization of anions. So with this, and also I would like to thank my collaborators, Misha uh, from IST Douglas, Robert Seyringer, Nicola, Andy, uh, 
uh, with this, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Andara, for this uh, nice and accessible talk. Uh, there was one question from uh, Sergey Borisenok uh, uh, about uh, whether the quantum input is can be uh, thought of as originating from some degrees of freedom related to, uh, say, quasi particles in uh, a condensed matter system. Maybe you commented on this, but. Uh, yeah. 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 Basically, I mean, these quasi particles is just if you, for example, if you, uh, if you, for example, consider impurities in a in a uh, in a some excitations, then the this this whole composite is called quasi particle. I mean, somehow in this sense, quantum impurities just individual particles coupled to many by the environment, and quasi particles in this sense just the dressing of these impurities. Yeah, and you can find in many places. In fact, I mean, from, you know, from polar physics to neutron stars, for example, right? For example, in neutron stars, there are also some protons, right? And the protons, in fact, in this sense, behave like a impurities. And uh, if you dress these protons with the neutron field, for example, you will obtain, for example, some quasi particle. I mean, yeah. Uh, maybe uh, I can also ask a naive question. Is it uh, possible to uh, uh, imagine the, the formation parameter in terms of some experimental uh, probes or uh, parameters? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, from the conceptual point of view, this the formation parameter is directly related to statistical parameter. And uh, it is really challenging to access the statistical parameter. Therefore, to be honest, I don't know. But, mm -hmm. but you can consider like that since this true controls your deformation or fuzziness in this sense, uh, somehow it should relate to your interaction. But the exact symmetry, to be honest, I don't know. I think it is, it is very challenging. So far, I think there is, up to my knowledge, there is only one model uh, I know, which is which admits somehow exact q deform uh, symmetries, apart from I don't know. Oh, okay, thank you.